All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before we get started, as always, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash. With Yahweh, the Heavenly Father's true name, Yahweh Shai, that's from the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, it's his true name, and Rakakwadash, that's the Holy Spirit. We're also going to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to all the brothers out there. And uh, pretty much, we're just going to go into a lesson on how, you know, we're pretty much going to be like the, uh, our forefather Enoch, all right? And how we're going to be translated, okay, from this present evil world, all right, to the Heavenly Father, okay? And, um, you know, pretty much, you know, we're the Lord's jewels, all right? We're His, you know, His anointed, His, you know, His precious ones. And you see, the Lord, He's going to um, take us from this world so we don't get, you know, basically, you know, uh, corrupted by it. Just like how he did Enoch, all right? And, um, you know, these things are coming very, very soon because this world is getting, you know, uh, more wicked and more evil every day. And at some point, the Lord is going to gather up his uh, elect from the four winds, as the scriptures talk about in the Gospels, all right? And you see, we're the only ones on this, you know, earth that are walking with the Most High, so to speak, Okay? And it's not talking about like a physical walk, you, you know, you you know, holding, you know, the most high's hand and you know what I mean, walking down the street. No, what it means by that is that you follow in his path, his ways. Okay? Right. You see, the rest of this world, they're caught up with, you know, the ways of this life, okay, which is really death anyways. Alright? You know, just pure wickedness. Okay? You got something up? Okay, because what what's happened to us, we've uh, the Lord has endowed us with what? The spirit of life. In these last days so in order for uh, in order for us not to get tainted or corrupted by the world the Lord is gonna uh, redeem us and save us you know Lord willing if we uh, continue and endure into the end which we're, we're seeing we're nearing we're getting closer and closer to the end it says this is Revelation 11 and 11 it says and after three days and a half the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and that's what's, that's what's taking place across the world all right, people are seeing us uh, uh, stand out on the highways and byways. You even have spots where it's like those are where the Israelites uh, teach. A brother, the brother in uh, San Francisco was talking about that. That's where the brother, the Israelites uh, teach. He was even on um, Google Maps and he was out front in front of a restaurant teaching. So we're stamped all over the world, and that's what that's that spirit of life according to this prophecy entering into us, and we're standing upon our feet. And ultimately, next is gonna what? be the the redemption like like what happened with enoch uh revelation 11 and 12 it says and they heard a great voice from heaven saying come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them mm. all right that's the next part of this uh story that's coming man all right we're gonna be ascended or uh we're gonna ascend into the cloud be changed as me and the brother was talking about earlier all right in the twinkling and in, in, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye so that what the Lord could uh, save us, because ultimately we're His, we're the third temple coming back. Yeah. We're the, the temple is us, all right. The men that you see on the highways and byways teaching the word, all right, risking their life for the truth, all right. We are that remnant of Israel, all right, prophesied to be redeemed in the last days, all right, to be uh, given to Yahweh Shai, man, all right. And what is Yahweh Shai coming in the chariot? So He's going to redeem us in the chariots, like um, you know, you have in the, in the time of war. You have um you have your your troops down on the on the ground and they need that after the the last uh, boss or the last enemy is killed they need that uh or they're running from the enemy or they're they're outnumbered what what happens they have they need that what is that called the evac all right emergency va uh, evacuation so, or around it like when the, when the chopper comes in and grabs them like in the middle of nowhere that's what the Lord's gonna do with his elect man yep you know you got it that's right um is there any more on that or no. Uh, that was it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get this in uh, Genesis chapter five and uh, and twenty four, and it reads. Actually, no, I'm gonna start at. I'm gonna start at twenty two. This is uh, Genesis five and twenty two. And Enoch walked with the Most High, after he begat Methuselah, three hundred years, and begat son and begat sons and daughters, and all the day. So he begat sons and daughters, by the way. Okay. And look, I'm going to keep reading actually. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with the Most High, and he was not, for the Most High took him.
Okay, so the, the, basically Enoch, he followed in the ways of righteousness. Okay, he followed after the Most High, and the Lord took him. And he even had uh, uh, family members. Because it just said there he begat what? Sons and daughters. So he had a family. But the Most High said what? Look, you got to come with me. You, you, they can't come w w with us. You're special. You're, you, you know, you, you're going to be uh, taken up. And that's going to happen to some of us brothers, man. Look, not all of our, I've made a lesson uh, maybe like a couple, I think maybe two or three weeks back. I said, uh, I think the, the lesson was entitled The Harsh Reality. Um, a lot of your uh, family members and friends aren't going to make it. Okay? That's the harsh reality of this truth. Not everybody that you love in this world is going to uh, be um, accepted by the Most High. A lot of them are, um, you know, tainted goods. Unprofitable, you know, servants. So they got to get left behind. And you can't, you know, fight with the Most High. You can't, you know, battle that. You have to accept it and just keep it moving. You, ha you as an individual have to go to the next step. All right? It is what it is. And if you don't, you know... Accept these things. Look, the Most High might just say, you know what? It, you know, hey, you're, you're trading what I'm going to give you, you know, for, for this. All right, stay with them and get destroyed with them. All you right. know? So the Lord's not playing, man. Okay? And um, so that's just, you know, a, a little side note there. All right? But well, point being, though, is that, that Enoch walked with the Most High and, and the Most High took him, okay? And this is the reason why. This is in uh, Wisdom of Psalm in chapter 4. And um, I'm going to start at verse 10. He pleased the Most High and was beloved of him. So that living, so like it says, so that living among sinners, he was translated. Yea, speedily he was taken away. Lest the wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. And you see, that's why the Most High is going to uh, translate us too. So we don't get tainted, okay, and get corrupt, you know, corrupted by this world, all right? And also our flesh, because that's the main thing that's corrupting us, is this flesh, because it's subject to sin, man, all right? This flesh wants to, you know, do wickedness. It doesn't want to be obedient to the Most High. The Spirit does. What does it say? The, the um, I think Yahweh Shai said this. The Spirit is willing, but the flesh, but the is, flesh weak. is weak, okay? All right? So the Lord has to save us even from this, uh, as the scriptures talk about, th these chains of darkness. So right. we can be pure and we can be uh, uh, incorrupt. Right. And that's why the Lord is going to do what? He's going to transform us. Once we get uh, uh, that, that, that salvation, once we, you know, start, you know, once we get beamed up, as the brother, uh, 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 get, you know, quoted, what you know, I think I might get, what is that, that Corinthians, I think like 14? All right, the First Corinthians 14 talks about how we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. All right, and, it, and it's a, a, a necessary thing so we can uh, uh, be pure. Okay, because I, I think what, it says in the scriptures that flesh and blood cannot inherit. Can you get that? Yep. Can you read that first? And I, and I got the Corinthians. Okay, and then I'm also going to get the, uh, the I think it's Jeremiah 31. All right, it talks about the new covenant. See, this flesh can't deal with that uh, that download, you know, that the Most High has in store for us, that new covenant, where we're going to have the laws in our in our minds. This flesh cannot deal with it. It's too much. It's too powerful. So that's why the Lord is going to have to uh, uh, give us that upgrade so we can handle that download. All right? You got that out by any chance? Con, this is, um, it is also shows you that um, we're going to bypass death. Hmm. 1 Corinthians uh, 15 and 55, it Gosh. says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Actually, you know what, Ark? It's the same start, chapter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's the same chapter. <laughs> start at 50, Ark. So, like, I didn't even know it was in the same chapter. I thought it was in the book of Acts. I don't know why it was in my mind, Acts. Can you start at 50, Ark? Kyle. Hold on. So, like, you know what? Let's, let me look up. Look, shit, there's a whole bunch up there. <sighs> Man, bro. Let's just get to the point, though. Let's start at... God, let's just start at 50, though. This whole chapter is heavy, though. This uh, First Corinthians, the uh, fifteenth chapter. You right. know, you you know, you brothers that are listening, you know, hey, read it on your own time, okay? But we'll just get to the point, and uh, we'll start at uh, start at start at forty seven. Shit, maybe forty six. Damn, bro. <laughs> 
47. I was going to say 47. Yeah. God, maybe even 46, Huck. God. Yeah, it started at 46. God, 1 Corinthians 15. <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of meat. God, I know. There's a lot of meat on this one. First, it's a heavy chapter, man. Hey, Paul was in the spirit, man. 1 Corinthians 15, 46. How be it that that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And that's the body we're in now. Nope. We need to eat. We need to sleep. We can't always be in the spirit in this body. It's subject to sin. It's a natural body. It's a, it's a what do you call that? A terrestrial body. For, why? Because we're on the terrain. Mm -hmm. It says, and afterward, that which is spiritual. That's the body that's coming. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Mm. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. So we don't, we can't do nothing but what's programmed for this body on, in this reality on this earth. That's why. What does it say? The angels uh, desire to look into the things that we that go down, go on down here because they can know nothing but what's in the heavens. Yep. We can know nothing but what's down here. All right, earthy things, terrestrial things. First Corinthians fifteen and forty eight. It says it right here. And as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such as such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's right. So we're going to eventually right. get that upgrade. Okay. The Lord has, you know, um, promises hmm. for us. Okay. You know, and he's going to give a grant to us in, in due season. As it was to say in the scriptures, every needful thing is in due season. All right. Okay. So the Lord's going to give us this upgrade when it, when the time is right, when it's uh, 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 necessary. And we're not at that time, but we know we're getting close, though, because... We're getting um, closer to the second return of Yahweh Shai. And once he comes back, he's going to destroy the wicked and also save the righteous at the same time. Right. So we know what's coming. Right. Because they, they, the scriptures talk about, you know, you know, basically, you know, um, you know, I'm roughly paraphrasing, but, you know, you, we were observing the times and the seasons, you know, and we're seeing these tokens, man. Mm -hmm. They're bypassing. Right. All right. You know, you, you see the wars and rumors of wars. See the uprisings of, of the people, the earthquakes, you know, uh, you know, there's so many signs, you know, the scriptures talk about them, all right? So that's God. how we know it's close. God. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. That's right. So this flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. So that's why the Lord has to translate us. He has to get us out of this flesh, Okay. It has to be done. Because this is this flesh is too base. It's too weak. You know? It's got to go. Hey, for the things that, 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 we're, that we're about to, uh, you know, receive, it, we got to get, you know, uh, that, that upgrade, that, that boost, man. Right. Cause we got to level up. Right. Because you look at the chariots and how fast they travel. If we were inside the chariot with this body traveling that fast, we'll be ripped to pieces. From the G force, so we're going. The Lord is going to have to give us a, a new, a different type of body. I got a scripture that came to mind, but I'm going to keep reading this. Uh -huh. Um, it says First Corinthians 15 and 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot hit inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Mm. And we know that that wisdom is pure. Okay, so it's incorruptible. So this is why the Lord has got, he, he's got to give us this new body because this. This this uh this this new covenant's coming, okay. Right. Which you know what? Let me get that real quick. All right. All right. This is Jeremiah chapter uh, what's it? Thirty, I believe. It's thirty one. I think it's thirty one and thirty one. It says here, in uh, Jeremiah thirty one and thirty one says, "Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand." To bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, meaning their minds, and will be their power, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord Yahweh, 
For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin uh, no more. All right. So that's what's coming. All right. That's why he, we got to get transformed, man. That's why the Lord is going to transform us. He's going to translate us. Right. Okay. Right. You know, because that's that's what's coming. And as we just read here, neither do corruption inherit incorruption. That's right. Okay. Uh, you got something up? Uh, I'm going to uh, continue in the first Corinthians. Okay. First, first Corinthians 15, 51. It says, behold, I show you a mystery. Mm. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That's right. We're all going to be changed. All right. It's starting off, you know, that those who are going to get changed first are, you know, starting with the elect. And then eventually all Israel, all Israel is actually going to have an upgraded body. Now, more than likely, you know, I'm just, I'm speaking as man and, you know, just, you know, um, just do extrapolation, right? Because there's going to be order in the kingdom. I believe that, you know, the elect are going to have a different level, you know, a different, you know, a, a different portion of powers. They're not going to be like the common Israelite. But every Israelite is going to be, you know, not human, so to speak. You know what I mean? They're going to be extraterrestrial. They're going to be, you know, basically like a, a superhero. Right. Okay. The women too. The women are going to get, the, you know, the little abilities as well. Yep. That's right. You know, we're going to be, we're not going to be the same as uh, the heathen. Mm hmm The heathen are going to go through life. See, the heathen... The heathen are going to continue this type of lifestyle going through, you know, maybe 80 to 100 years and then dying. Might The Lord might give them a little bit longer, you know, but they're going to eventually just die and then, you know, come back, die, come back. We're never going to die. All right. We're going to live forever. Yeah, because we're, we're, we're going to be immortals. And as the scriptures talk about, hey, the wages of sin is death. And if we got these law, statutes and commandments in us, we're not going to be breaking the laws. So no death is going to occur. Right. All right. Right. Keep going, Ark. Con. Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, mm. at the last trump. Yep. And, the, the, and that's where we're at right now. We're basically at that last trump. Right. Okay. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's right. And that's what's about to happen. We're about to be changed. Okay. The Lord's about to, uh, uh, you know, translate us, and we're going to be changed. You know, we, we, we might be going up into the chariot and then, you, you you know, you get the, you know, your flesh changes and, you know, who knows right, right. what's going to happen, how that's going to occur. All of a sudden, yeah, you, you know, this corruptible, corruptible flesh, you know, peels off and then the incorruptible flesh gets put on and you get your, you know, the, you're basically going to put on the real you. Right. Because this is really not us. All right. 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 And that's, and this all culminates with what? Yahweh shall come in. That's that scripture I'm going to get real quick before I forget it again. I almost did. Come on, get it. I can almost still. I got this on deck still. Uh, this is, uh, let's see here. Bear with me one second. Uh, Lord brought it back. I almost forgot it, bro. <laughs> yep, yeah, this is uh, 1 John. First John chapter three and two. I'm gonna start at one. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of the Most High. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. Because mm. we're just teaching this word. People looking at us crazy. These niggas talking about they gonna fly and they gonna rule the world. We are because we're gonna be changed into the image of Yahweh when he comes. That's that twinkling of an eye. Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High because we've come into this truth. And it doeth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath his, his this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. So when the Lord appears, all right, in this this last trump, we're going to be as he is. The Lord is in a uh, immortal body right now, sitting on the right hand of the of the, of the Most High. So when the Lord, when Yahweh appears, we're going to be transformed and we're going to be as he is. Okay, because what we're ultimately his little brothers. <laughs> 
So the the Yahweh is gonna send Yahweh to receive his little brothers that he was given. And what does that come with? A new body, a new mind, that that uh that fleshy heart. All that is a transformation, and uh, it, it all goes into us re receiving a new body. All that new mindset, the laws are gonna be in us. We're gonna be able to do all types of certain things. You see, this is what's coming. All right, now we can't fathom it in our mind, but the very fact that we understand this truth, that is a, a, a sign that we might be those men that are gonna be changed into something outside of this world because we're already outside of this world as far as in the spirit. All right. That's the first step. That's the first, exactly. That's the first step. The exactly. scriptures talk about come out of my people, right? And, you know, that's a twofold, you know, breakdown. Yes, you know, we, we always talk about how, yeah, you know, you got to come out of this place spiritually, you know. But eventually, yeah, the physical coming out of her is going right. to happen. The Lord's going to have the chariots, you know, uh, take us, you know, take us from this world. Yep. Okay? Us. Yep. yep. That's why the scriptures say separate yourselves from these people, you know. Separate yourselves from among them. Right. I think it's in the, the book of Second Corinthians, I believe it talks about that. All right? Right. But everything starts off, you know, uh, you know, spiritually, then, you know, uh, the Lord eventually has things happen physically. And we're right. getting close to that point. Right. We're getting real, real close. <clears throat> hey, just like Enoch, he walked with the Most High first, and then that's when he, he took him. Yep, yep. That's when he got translated. So the first step is is returning unto the Lord. Yeah, we're walking in the way in his ways now. Yep. You know, to the best of our ability. Uh, the world's not doing that. You know, this is um uh, First Corinthians fifteen. Uh fifty three. Yep. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on in incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Ooh, that's oh, right. Oh, death, where's thy sting? Can oh, I get this real where's quick? thy victory? Yep. Can I get this too real quick? This is Philippians 3 and 21. Who shall change our vile bodies, that it may yep. be fashioned like unto his glorious body, Man, according yep. to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So the Lord's going to change that, change our body. We're going to get the that, that, that um in, in, immortal body, okay? The thing that's not going to be corrupted. And that's when death is going to get swallowed up. Oh, death is already swallowed up because Yahweh Shai, uh, uh, he, 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 he won over death. Okay? I'll say this, though. Hey, we're we're going to uh, go through our own process, our own, you know, um, uh, yeah, for lack of words, our own uh, time to, uh, to conquer death. Each one of us. Once we get what? Hey, once we get translated and we get, you know, transformed. All right? <laughs> Were you at 55? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bible could shot. Read that. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. The, it says, O death, where is thy sting? Woo! O grave, mm -hmm. where is thy victory? That's right, because they're not going to get the victory. At the end of the day, look, Esau and, 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 and uh, shit, the flesh isn't going to win. Hey, the spirit is going to overcome. All right? Keep going, Ark. All right, verse 56. The sting of death is sin. Mm-hmm. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth us, giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Exactly. That's why you got to uh, worship Yahweh Shai. If we didn't have Yahweh Shai, we wouldn't have a, a sacrifice. We wouldn't have a mediator. We'll be through out here. We'll be done. Mm -hmm. See, the uh, Yahweh, he had it always in the uh, in the game plan to have Yahweh Shai, you know, be there for us. You know? And the Lord, you know, he, uh, he, he he's going to uh, exalt Yahweh Shai. He's going to be the top tier, man. Right. You know, on this earth. He's the top tier spirit. All right. Besides, you know, of course, Yahweh, Yahweh he's he's ancient of days. He is, you know. Right. And he won. He, he made Yahweh Shai his only begotten. You know. That's right. Yahweh Shai is that, hey, he's the top tier spirit in, in this in this world. Okay. All right. Is there any more today? No, nah, that was it. All right. Um. Is there anything else, man? Hold up, real quick. I don't know if I should get the one in Hebrews real quick. Is it Hebrews five? Yep. So we we're not gonna um. 
we're not going to experience this uh, this peon uh, fleshly life anymore, man. We're not going to battle with demons and thoughts. The brother uh, uh, Taziyar said that from when, when I seen him at the, um, the last uh, brother when we get when we got together the last time when they came in town. He said we're not going to battle demons no more. <laughs> we're not going to battle brothers are not going to be sick and have ailments and you know battle all types of stuff going on with their bodies and stuff. They mind. All that stuff's gonna be washed away, man. It's gonna be a new beginning, man. All right, a fresh restart. That's right. What is that? Uh, the word for uh, a refresh? Uh, kinos. Yep. It's gonna be a refreshing of the earth and a refreshing of what the the, the Lord's people. <laughs> you see, everything's gonna be made new, and that's the times we're coming into because fucking Esau destroyed the people, the earth, everything, everything. <laughs> I got uh, two precepts, and we could probably end it uh, out yeah. on these two. This is Sirach 44 and 16. Enoch pleased the Lord and was translated, being an example of repentance to all generations. Yep, yep. That's what we're doing now. Yep. What is it, what, are, what is it we go out there and teach? We're going out there to teach what? Repentance. Yeah. It was it, the, Our main thing is, um, like how Yahweh Shai said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. That's the main message we push to our people. Get right. Right. Get right. Stop being a lowlife, a loser, a wicked individual. Get right with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, look, the Lord is going to translate you like how he translated Enoch. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, you just got to wait, though. That's why the scripture said, wait upon me, saith the Lord. You got to wait. You know, we're on the Lord's time. And even with the, when you read about the, uh, Enoch, that wasn't right away. If you, I think, uh, I, I gotta have to reread it, but it was uh, some years before he got translated. That wasn't an immediate process. When you look, when you read it, man, it, it said there was some years. Where it was uh, talked about how he started walking with the Most High after he begat his sons and daughters, and he was about three hundred years old. You know what? Let me just read it, man, for clarification's sake. All right. It says here, back in Genesis five and twenty-two, it says and Enoch walked with the Most High and be, he begat Methuselah three hundred years. So he was three hundred. Okay, and begat sons and daughters. And it says, um, and all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. So it, it took him 65 years for him to get translated. 65 years, because he started walking with the Most High after he began Methuselah, which was when he was 300. Okay, so point being, it took him 65 years, man. You have to wait on the Lord, all right, to do these things. You got to do it on His. You got to wait on His time, okay? Um, that's and that's old. the problem with Jake, man. They always want to, you know, I'm impatient. Yeah, they're impatient. They always want stuff to happen quickly. Shit, so what else you gonna do? You can't do shit else but do what you said to do while you wait. Exactly. <laughs> you know, get your house in order, man, and just serve the Lord. This is what you're made for, anyways. To be a, a priesthood, a nation of priests, man. You know. But I got one more scripture. This is uh, Hebrews 11 and 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because the Most High had translated him. For because his translation, it's like it, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased the Most High. You see? Hey, he, he, he was testifying, okay, about the Most High, his works. All right, what, what you should be doing? What's what, holy, what's profane? That's what he was doing, like us. All right? Talks about in Revelation how we're going to get saved uh, because of uh, uh, this testimony that we have. Damn, man, where the hell is that? You know where that's at, Ak? Can you type in testimony? Type in testimony. It should come up. I believe it's in... Um, it's uh, in Revelation. I should forget where it's at. But that, that, that 12 and 11. Baba Kusha, can you get there? I think that's it. Yep, 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 yep. That, that's it right there. Uh, uh, Revelation 12 and um, I'm sorry to start at 10. Okay. And I heard a loud voice in heaven. Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power and the power of his anointed. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our power day and night 
and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So and ultimately, by, it starts off with Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. And by the word of their testimony. Yep, exactly. And, and, and what's our testimony? And what, what is the testimony? As it says here in uh, Revelation, what is this, 19? So I'll give me a moment. 19 and uh, 10. This is what it says here. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, so this is um, uh, John, okay? John the Revelator, he, he tried to worship an angel. And this is what the angel said to him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not, because you're not supposed to worship angels. All right? And I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship Yahweh. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay? And that's what we, we That's we what do. we got. That's, yeah, that's what we got. That's what we talk about. That's why we can, we can look, read the scriptures and be look out into the world and be like, damn, that's what that's talking about. Yep. While on the flip side, a person will read it and be like, they don't know what's going on. And ultimately... We have a special spirit, man. Yeah. In us. <laughs> that's right. It's not normal. And it's going to be changed and, and put into an ultimate body soon. Yeah, it talks about, I believe that... Um, that we have these, uh, like, like basically, like these golden things in like earthly vessels. I forgot yeah, how treasure in earthly it, yeah, vessels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it wrong. Yeah, we have these treasures in earthly vessels. We got the treasures, man. We got the jewels, baby. All right. You see. But well, point being, though, this testimony, which we're uh, we're preaching, what righteousness, a, a a kingdom where all good things dwell, where the Lord's gonna reign. This is what we're teaching. Uh, all right, to the world. These are the things that's gonna get established. And with us preaching that, this is what's going to uh, uh, make us um, uh, basically overcome this whole, this whole, uh, I don't even know what word to use, but this whole system, man. All right? And this is what's pleasing the Most High. This testimony. Like how, it, it, how he was pleased with Enoch with his testimony. All right? So hey, this, this is... um. Some serious business that we're in. Like, brothers really got to think about these things and, and really meditate on it. You know, that's why it's good to, you know, go somewhere where you have a, a, some peace and quiet and you can really meditate on the things that they, that the Lord has written in these scriptures and what you know. And really think about what you're involved in. This is not some low-level, earthly thing that we're in. We're, 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 hey, we're, we're in a high, very high vibration, man. Okay, this is this is a heavenly vibration. What we're preaching, what we're talking about. And this is why hey, the, the, this world cannot understand it because they are of this world. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, hey uh, uh, they, um, Yahweh Shai said this to those wicked scribes and Pharisees: "You are from beneath, and I am from above." You see? All right, and these people, they're just not going to get it because it's 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 far above their you know, <laughs> it's far above them. You know? Right. right. You got anything else, Sock? Hey, but, you know, hey, with that, we hope this was an edifying lesson. And as always, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Also, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Bray Millstone. And salutations to all you brothers out there. Shalom and a Baba Ball. A Baba Ball.